Our next speaker is no stranger to standing up for the safety and equal rights of Jewish Americans. Mort Klein works tirelessly on this effort, both as the head of one of the oldest Jewish groups in the U.S., the Zionist Organization of America, known as ZOA, for the last 25 years. He's a child of Holocaust survivors, born in a, in a displaced persons camp in Gunsberg, Germany. He's widely regarded as one of the most outspoken and leading Jewish activists in the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Mort Klein. Thank you. You are the proud, courageous Jews of New York City to come out and speak out. We have all come out here today because we share, we share a common concern and a common belief. Not only do black lives matter, but Jewish lives matter. And Orthodox Jewish lives ma also matter. During the Democratic presidential debates, there wasn't a single question about anti-Semitism and the Jewish state of Israel. Don't these journalists care about anti-Semitism on campuses, in parts of Congress, in the media, and in Brooklyn? <laughs> We're, we all here do care. We believe that the overwhelming majority of our good people of America do care. It's time that New York City leaders start really caring. They're not doing it yet. <laughs> we asked Mayor de Blasio to show it more forcefully. We want the political leaders and the Jewish leaders and the Muslim leaders and Hispanic leaders and the African American leaders to show it more forcefully their fight against hatred against Jews. We Jews rightly spoke out and marched with the African Americans for their civil rights and voting rights which were horrifically denied to African Americans. Now is the time for African American and Hispanic leaders to speak out against the brutally and regularly and mindlessly attacks on innocent Jews in Williamsburg, Crown Heights, and Borough Park. Where are the African American and Hispanic leaders? I'm urging, I'm demanding that Mayor de Blasio have a series of press conferences organizing black and Jewish and Christian and Muslim and Asian and Hispanic leaders to publicly condemn these brutal attacks on these clearly identifiable Jews by these cowardly African-American and Hispanic thugs. Get this on the front pages of every New York City newspaper. First, first is the clearly identifiable Jews. Next, it will be the secular and less identifiable Jews. And who knows what comes after that. Mr. de Blasio, where is the increase of 2,000 police officers that you bragged about on Hannity? We don't see them in Crown Heights and Williamsburg and Borough Park. Where are they, Mr. de Blasio? <laughs> Mr. de Blasio, how about dressing up police decoys to look like clearly identifiable Jews to enable the police to arrest these violent attackers instantly and intimidate these cowardly would-be attackers and make them think twice about attacking innocent Jews? And Mr. de Blasio, stop criticizing the police. You say they're not, you say they're not compassionate enough. Mr. Mayor, compassion should be reserved for the innocent law-abiding victims, not the violent criminals, Mr. de Blasio. And as we know, anti-Semitism is not only a problem in Brooklyn and New York, it hurts me, it pains me to say that an ADL survey shows that 34%, according to the ADL, of Muslims in America are anti-Semitic. It pains me and frightens me to say that Muslim imams around the country, in North Carolina, New Jersey, California, Texas, Pennsylvania, and elsewhere, have been videotaped preaching the genocidal Quranic Hadith, which is repeated in the Hamas Charter and they proclaim, come and kill the Jew hiding behind a rock or a tree, these imams are preaching. <laughs> these Muslim imams accuse Jews of being Nazis and fascists. 
they acute their demand to cleanse the Temple Mount of the filth of the Jews, say these Imams. They urge turning Jew Jerusalem and Palestine into a graveyard for the Jews. Here in America, they're stating this in sermons. And they're demanding to annihilate the Jews one by one. These are sermons happening throughout America, at mosques throughout America. Jewish leaders and political leaders, and yes, Muslim leaders, must condemn these sermons and demand these Muslim Imams be immediately fired and terminated. They haven't been. <laughs> and on campuses around the country, more and more students are excluded from various campus activities if they show support for Israel, the Jewish state. Jewish pro-Israel students are demonized and denounced. There's a dramatic increase in support for BDS on campuses, for promoting violence against the Jewish state, for destroying the Jewish state, and professors and academics are more and more holding events condemning the Jewish state and boycotting the Jewish state and Jewish leaders. Our colleges around the country had the Students for Justice in Palestine. They hold rallies screaming that Jews are baby killers. We should destroy Israel, that Jews are racist and supremacist, that Jews get, should get out of America, that Jews support genocide against Arabs. They support the terror war against Israel. <laughs> we must urge political leaders <laughs> and Jewish leaders and religious leaders and the presidents and top officers of these universities to condemn the SJP and such groups by name and expel them all from the universities. Throw these students out. Throw them out. The great historian Joel, Paul Johnson wrote in the history of the Jews, he said, one of the principal lessons of Jewish history has been that repeated verbal slanders are sooner or later followed by violent physical deeds against the Jews. Are these attacks on Jews by African Americans in some part due to the vicious anti-Semitic verbal slanders by Louis Farrakhan and Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson and even by Congressman Hank Johnson who publicly called Jews in Judea and Samaria termites. These are verbal slanders that must be condemned by Jewish leaders and black leaders and congressional leaders, but it hasn't happened, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> the anti-Semitic Semitism envoy for America, Elon Carr, said last week that almost all the anti-Semitic attacks on European Jews were committed by radical Muslims. God forbid this should begin to happen here in America. Can this be in part due to the Imams in Europe and the Middle East urging violence against Jews? We must condemn these sermons. <laughs> Finally, the U.S. has now overt Jew haters in Congress. The anti-Semitic, Israelophobic Ilan Omar from Minnesota. preaches that the Jewish state of Israel is evil, preaches that the Jewish state and the Jews have hypnotized the world to support them. She says Jewish money buys support for the Jewish state. She compares boycotting Israel to boycotting Nazi Germany. She condemns Israel as an apartheid state, even though in this election, 15 Arabs were elected into the Knesset. How many blacks were elected in South Africa during their apartheid? None. <laughs> and Rashida Tlaib takes pictures with Hezbollah supporters, the congresswoman from Michigan. Pictures with Rasmia Odette, a convicted killer. She claimed, proclaims to stop all aid to the Jewish state that we should end relations with Israel, that they're not an ally or a democracy. She says during the Holocaust, after the Holocaust, that the Arabs risked their lives to give a safe haven to Jews after the Holocaust. For God's sakes, six Arab nations attacked the Jewish state of Israel to try and murder every Jew and destroy the Jewish state. Rashida Tlaib is a despicable, anti-Semitic liar and disgrace. <laughs> An AOC from Queens supports Arab writing against Jews. She supports violence against Jews publicly. She calls Israel white supremacists. She says when Israel tries to defend themselves 
that, that she caused these massacres against the Jews. We, we must, we must demand to throw out, we must demand to throw out from every committee, Rashida Tlaib and AOC and Elon Omar. Throw them off of every committee, just like the Republicans threw Stephen King off every committee. In a fabulous country like Israel, that originally made Hebrew a mandatory language in all of their universities, that James Madison, the president, was a Hebrew major at Princeton, that they put Hebrew in the logo of Yale, Dartmouth, and Columbia, in love with the Jews of the Old Testament, and they actually made a gesture to have as their symbol of America Moses leading the children of Israel out of Egypt, that almost became the symbol of America. And who designed this emblem? Thomas Jefferson and Benjamin Franklin. This is how wonderful America is. <laughs>